October 17th, 1874. Saturday. It was a warm, pleasant day. Florence's funeral was attended by a large number of our relatives, neighbors, and friends, and the Reverend Mr. Werther officiated, and we followed her remains to the grave and looked upon her face for the last time on earth. She has dashed away from our midst very suddenly. She went to South Farmington the 20th of last January to work in a straw factory, and was well as usual. She wrote home often, saying she was well until about three weeks before she finished work there, which was about the 20th of June. She wrote that she had taken a slight cold. Her lungs were sore. She was tired with the work, and should be glad when she could come home. She finished work there, went to Cambridge, and stayed the week, and came home the 30th of May. We were surprised to see her look so poor and thin, and thought when she had got rested a little, she would be better and begin to gain in flesh though she had a little hacking cough, night sweats, and a poor appetite after being home a fortnight, drinking thoroughwort tea and bringing doctored at home, and getting just no better. I carried her to Sacco to see Dr. Libby. He said she had a slight irritation of the lungs, but thought she would soon throw it off, and wanted to see her again in a week. But after seeing her a few times, and finding his medicine did not work as he wanted it to, he told me he was afraid it was tubercular consumption, and that he felt very anxious about her. She continued to ride to Sacco every week to see the doctor till the 3rd of August, when she got so weak, so tired, that it took her too much to go so far, and the doctor did come to see her again. He had given up hope, or had small expectations of her getting well again, but did continue to come every week till she died. She still rode out most every day till the 15th of September, when she was so weak she could not get into her carriage. Florence was twenty years old, and died at half-past six in the evening. December 5th, 1875 When Florence was sick last year, Margie appeared to be in perfect health, and friends who came to see Florence remarked how healthy Margie looked. But soon after Florence died in September, later in November and December, Margie has a slight hacking cough with a disinclination for exercise. She worked about the house and rode out till last December when her cough grew worse. We gave her teas and medicine for her cough, thinking and hoping it might be but a slight cold or sickness that would soon pass away. As the weather became warm, she rode out quite often, and had not strength to walk but a short distance. The last of May I went for Dr. Libby, and told him how she had been, and what she had done, and I asked him to come see her. He came and visited her, and told me that her lungs were diseased, and he feared she could not get better, but would try his best, and at his second visit she appeared to be better, and we felt some encouraged as he continued to visit her. But after the second visit, she began to fail slowly, and by the last of June, she weighed but eighty-five pounds. She continued to ride through June, July, and after haying was over most every day for a while, some days going long rides with me to the port, to the beaches, to the Great Falls, to Sacco. She was very feeble at this time, but seemed to enjoy riding, and the doctor said being out in the open air would do her as much good as medicine. She continued to ride out through September, but grew weaker all the time, was subject to dizziness and fainting spells when she was riding, and I had to stop and fan and bathe her head with water. She rode with me for the last time the third day of October. She was very weak and feeble, and after she came from the ride she told her mother she would never get well again, and if it was God's will that she was satisfied. She said it was all right. She went about the house till the 14th of October, when she kept her room most of the time. The 17th of November she walked with my assistants into the sitting-room and sat at the table and ate dinner with us. 
Though her appetite was very poor, she said the food tasted better to eat with us. I carried her out in my arms several times after, especially Thanksgiving Day when she insisted on having our usual dinner and sitting with us, and she seemed to enjoy it. But her cough grew worse, the phlegm grew more and more troublesome, and her pains more and more severe, until God, in infinite mercy, took her home.